first one you need before the term uh, the seda it will add. Yeah. Do I make myself clear? Yeah. Okay. Before we continue, I would like again to ask for permission from the judges to start the competition. Without further ado, I would like to call the first speaker of the affirmative team, Miss Gracia, to deliver her speech.
more accessible that the people can communicate like like-minded people with just a few clicks. For example, such as the Twitter groups and forms are a way of for the users to exchange ideas and also develop the ideas with experiences and also discussing about the current issues, either the economical, either the biological or either the sociological issues in this world. This way of communication and sharing can possibly affect creativity because people can learn by sharing different experiences. I would like to give my rebuttal to the first speaker. You said that technology can distract people. How do you know that it can distract people? You do not mention specifically what kind of apps that can distract them or how do it distract them. That's all from me. Thank you. to invite the second speaker of the affirmative, Mr. Kema, to deliver his speech. Uh, I'll start in three, two, one. We appreciate the openness of opinions. However, our heart still strongly believe that the rise of technology decreases creativity. <clears throat> I'd like to reiterate one of the main points in my uh, in my first speaker's speech, which is technology causes the lack of original thinking and copying. Many people have used the internet to explore things that they cannot access physically, such as probably faraway places. But then uh, we lose the desire to visit them, to see them in person. We lose the desire to search physically and experience them in a greater fashion. Technology prevents humans from achieving what will possibly be greater inventions. We've explored too many things in our world, but then after exploring those and having those uh, and having those places exported to the internet, we lose the desire to see them again. And uh, also, I'd like to provide a rebuttal for the opponent's uh, opinion. Uh, technology does not mean that it's going to be more inspirational. Technology is instead going to be able to creativity in the future, such as through the rise in AA and artificial intelligence funds. One of the examples of artificial intelligence harming creativity is the creation of uh, artificial intelligence paintings. Uh, these paintings, or even these programs, can harm the can harm creativity as we know today. Additionally, technology causes humans to lose their most basic skills. Thanks to technology, we are now not accustomed to searching information in books. We are no longer accustomed to writing creatively. No, I please. So basically, how can we know that a provides dangerous, especially you stated that and provide dangers because they desire people to like find some new experience, basically like not on internet. But how can you know that it provide dangers to like online system or like technology? Since like nowadays the technology is a bit like you know like basically more improved for than like back then in like nineteen like you know nineteen eighty eight or like something else. So can you give me like the explanation for that? Thank you. First of all, as we know, AI paintings AI paintings are harmful to creativity as First of all, we just need to type in something and then have a result come out of it. It does not mean that we work hard to achieve those results. Find the software and then type in a few words and the painting comes out. It does not mean that we are going to be more creative. In fact, technology ruins creativity at this point. And this is why our house strongly believe that the rise of technology can increase tech creativity. Thank you. Thank you. Now I would like to call the second speaker of the leadership team, Mr. Anton, to deliver his speech. I would like to start my speech in three, two, one. So first of all, I would like to point out as my rebuttal. The first one is originality. They find originality as an issue connecting to technology, while actually it could be countered by the inspirations that are found and generated better by people. And second of all, 
they mentioned that AI painting could be dangerous and it could be actually one of the examples of inspirations. So we could take AI painting as an inspiration and we could generate more from the result of AI painting and make it better. And my first point is technology actually creates more people who are unable to find it and to source their creativity physically but technology could be the place where people put out their creativity on like Photoshop and for, uh, for other example all the manga or the so-called animated 2D or 3D comics authors and also animes that requires a lot of creativity to make it interesting and second of all and by the use of technology, people could see the result of the manga and animes and may trigger others to also start making one. And more authors and more authors of manga and anime would lead to the increase of employment as manga authors, as I said before. And by that, it could trigger the rise of employment and leads to the rise of the economic spending of the country's people that Find that information, please. No, thank you. So, it would increase the economy and also the government's revenue. That's all. Okay, thank you. Now I would like to call the third speaker of the informative team, Mr. Jaden, to begin his speech. Actually, 
technology really can ease our communication too. So if you say that a technology is not good, and especially it could like distract our like you know distracting the all of the communication or like maybe some of the our mental, it's actually not. And then it's also stated with my second speaker. He stated that the scrolling of online platforms for art could be a part of searching for inspiration too. So it's like not meant to be like all of them are negative or something. Because at the moment, it's also stated from my first speaker, it's like good for our business economy or like other education too. So it's like not all like you could think it by our own brain or like you know our mind because like at the same time we must find inspiration or like out there like on the technology or like maybe on the internet. And then secondly, the I think like the third speaker or like the second one stated that distract people of, of using the technology it's actually not distracting enough because well it might distract but like you didn't say how can it distract and how in like what way because like we do have like our own way. Like people maybe do got distracted maybe like for some online pra platform who got like cyberbullying, that's like an example. Or like maybe some other, you know, like they could get distracted because they scroll too much of like TikToks or like maybe other platform that like shows the negative facts. And you do not say that and you do not say that specifically and recently. And then the third one is of course the dangerous because of the creation of artificial and intelligence. Basically in the internet, I know a lot like because shows a lot of artificials and intelligence. It's like not all about the, you know, out there like resources and you state like you stated that um, you can improve more when not playing on technology. So you can improve more on like um, finding another resources not just from technology. But like it's really a bit of you feel to prove that because I feel like it's not dangerous enough because at the moment technology right now is very improving and it's basically not talking more about like me, how technology is dangerous because I'm like it could it could block the mental and all the like you know bad effects and you and of course I stated before you did not like say any distraction or other things so it's a bit hard to prove that you really stated that technology can decrease on like creative creativity because like basically there are a lot of a lot of chances chance for people to find a lot of inspiration so not only just like roaming around out there and like find a new inspiration. So I think that's why I urge everyone to I urge you to agree that the rise of technology increasing creativity. Thank you. Thank you. Now I would like to call the reply speaker of the negative. Miss Angelina to begin her speech. I'll start my reply speech in three, two, one. So our team said that technology can increase creativity since it is a source of information and also inspiration. And technology can also ease our communication and also creativity can lead to employment. While the opposition thinks, uh, the proposition thinks of that technology can decrease creativity since it can distract people of using the technology and also because of the danger, dangerous effects of the creation of artificial intelligence. I believe that ours win because we are able to state all the evidence that supports whether uh, the technology will increase creativity and also we are able to make a better rebuttal and logical rebuttal which is why I proudly propose. Thank you. Begin the speech. The third speaker. The replay speaker. The first speaker. First or second. My reply speech will begin in three, two, one. First of all, we appreciate the opponent's arguments. However, our house feels from the belief that. Our, our, our arguments are still stronger and have more base. We must remember that with every invention, there comes, there will eventually be underlying problems. When lights were first invented, humans lose almost 50% of their sleeping time. And it's going to be the same with all forms of technology. Technology harms the development of creativity on humans, and therefore, as much as really is discouraged in debates, we, our cause still strongly, uh, still strongly agree that 
our arguments are still stronger and we are going to win this debate. Okay, good afternoon again. Uh, now we will start the final round. So I would like to ask the participants to come. We will start to do the flip coin again to choose which one will be the affirmative and which is going to be the negative thing.
okay? And you choose to affirmative. Affirmative. Also, you can say up there.
Okay, time is up for the concept building. Now we will start the final round of our debate competition today. So, um, before that, I would like to ask permission from our judges to start the competition. Yeah, I hope you guys try your best. And let's see who will get the first and also the second winner. Then, first of all, I would like to call the first speaker of the affirmative from Cirebon 1, Ms. Sakura, to deliver her speech. So, good afternoon, everyone, ladies and gentlemen, judges, and the uh, team. Uh, right now, the motion is that this house believes that going to Mars gives more benefits than its possible nature. The idea of sending humans to Mars has been a, quite an idea since 1940s, but it hasn't really been done considering its benefits and risks from the scientists. By going to Mars, we would like to define going to Mars means sending humans in this case. We would also like to specify that while we do not have the urgency to exactly send people to Mars right now, we need to uh, consider the condition that Earth will face in the future. So we will be sending humans to Mars in uh, final time, uh, considering the problems that Earth is facing right now, including global warming, environmental damages, and possible overpopulation. Uh, why is Mars chosen as an uh, alternative? Because Mars is the closest potentially habitable planet compared to Earth. That's why scientists have been debating whether or not to send humans to Mars. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, right now we are facing global warming. The temperature is, go is increasing day by day. Uh, governments may have uh, uh, tried to find solutions such as the per Paris Agreement um, electric vehicles, but still no significant changes is made right now, as you can see in the status quo. Therefore, sending humans to Mars can be a solution to uh, face this uh, environmental damages and possible social damages, so this house would send humans to Mars. Uh, further benefits will be discussed by my second speaker, as I will be focusing more on my argument on why and the urgency to send humans to Mars. As I've mentioned before, there is history shows that life continue, so continuing on Earth is not guaranteed. Um, we might all know, and it's very uh, basic knowledge, that the dinosaurs are cleared out and went uh, into extinction due to a meteor hitting Earth. And it is not out of question that it can possibly happen again in the future. So to prevent the extinctions of humans, the extinction of us, homo sapiens here, we need to um, think forward and send people to Mars or other alternatives that can possibly save us. Therefore, this house believes that going to Mars gives more benefits than its possible danger. I urge you and everyone to stand by a proposition. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I would like to invite the first speaker from the negative team, Ms. Lita, to deliver her speech.
to today, Earth still has more life expectancy than in Mars. Secondly, we should be more focused in trying to fix the planet that we live in than just going to another planet with more risks and less life expectancy there. So, my first point is that Mars has said, as I said, has less life expectancy and it is not as inhabitable as Earth. Mars is has less oxygen, less water. We don't have the life that we have here if we do it in Mars. So, you said Mars is the closest as we have to work. How do we know that and how are we sure that other planets have in the scientific in the sun in this scientific in scientific base, the closest we have, again I want to emphasize on the potentially inhabitable planet, which is Mars. The other closest planet is light years away from us and it will take us even more years and years of technological advancement.
one. Now, I thank the opposing speaker for bringing up these points. However, I would like to say that this team does not believe that that is the best alternative, uh, alternative outcome. Why is that? It's because, indeed, the risk at the moment greatly outweighs the benefit. For one, if we were to send humans or even machinery at the moment to Mars, that would cost very much. And instead of using that money, we have numerous problems on Earth. We have poverty, we have food shortages, we have people with no house to live in, no shelter. And instead of sending people to Mars, we can use those resources to focus it on our current condition. Because even though we need an alternative, that is okay, that's fine. However, we also need to focus now on what we have already. Mars has already confirmed unstable conditions for life. They, they cannot sustain the standard that we live in. Even a simple mistake like, let's say, your window shattering on Mars, that could lead to life threatening damage. On Earth, that could just fix it. It's one heart with the oxygen there will help you breathe, help you live. On Mars, that is not the case. Another thing is that on Earth, we barely have any... Well, we have lots of unexplored terrain. The ocean is barely explored compared to the amount we spend on space. And instead of sending people to Mars and wasting all that money and time, we can focus it on what we already have, the conditions that we already know somewhat of more than Mars. We can move on. So if you're unsure that Mars is a good solution to what we're facing today, then are you sure that we can fix the problem here with the money or the budget that government use? Because as we can see, for years and years we have been facing lots of problems, including global warming. But still, the temperature today is not going any lower. Thank you. Well, in COVID times, research has proved that the atmosphere has recovered from all the pollution we've caused. And that's just an example of what we can accomplish if we actually put the effort into it instead of going to space. The atmosphere recovered so much during COVID due to the lack of using, let's say, cars, using this, using that, and it greatly benefits, okay? So if we were to go and help fix or improve our Earth, instead of going outside to Mars and spending so much time on something we have no idea of at the moment, we can greatly benefit Earth, as well as there is progress already on how to defend ourselves from meteors, how to defend ourselves from possible outcomes, and we can greatly improve those instead of just running away and finding another option, finding another planet that we have used and then destroying it. Because it's somewhat inevitable that we're gonna already, let's say, go extinct somehow. So why not just benefit our Earth now? And that is why we believe that uh, the risk greatly outweighs the benefit. Thank you. We have to uh, specify and we have to emphasize 
that the urgency to go to Mars is not now. Completely agree. What's the urgency of going to Mars now? It's not. It could be in the future, but not now. Because again, as mentioned by you, we have poverty, we have climate change, we have global um, warming. Okay, sure. You just said that it is a very urgent matter that Earth is decreasing life expectancy. We never know that when the meteor will spread. But you just said, oh, it doesn't have to be now. Yes. So, what do you mean by that? Because the motion is, is it very urgent for, is, it's not, is it very urgent for humans to descend on Mars now? But the motion is, is it beneficial for humans to descend on Mars? Yes, it is. It's very obvious. Uh, uh, researching and extraterrestrial um, exploration is very beneficial, as I mentioned previously. Um, Again, I would like to enforce my statement. How do you know it's unstable? We have never sent a single human being to Mars. Agree? Agree. And as you mentioned before, which is a very um, odd argument, I will say, the pollution is lower in the pandemic. Obviously, yes, because people, uh, activity are restricted. They are staying back at home. But do you want to live every day in a pandemic situation? I don't think so, right? Because our activities are restricted. So, I don't see why your argument is valid in any sense. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I would like to call the third speaker of the negative team, Ms. Jakarta, to begin her speech. I will begin my speech in three, two, one. First of all, I'd like to thank the affirmative team for their arguments. Uh, and I would like to review their statements, starting with the first one, which was, um, I would like to ask you, wouldn't sending humans to Mars use many natural, unrenewable resources and actually further increase the speed of climate change that you so emphasize the main reason why we need to send humans to Mars in case we don't have a new plan, a, a place for us humans to live. And also, wouldn't us preventing extinction by going to Mars, in a way, um, be interfering with natural selection? We as humans, we are, we are living beings. At the end of the day, we were meant to go extinct in the end of the day. And if traveling to Mars, you emphasize that we will be traveling to Mars for research in the for far, far future, wouldn't by then there will also be many improvements in technology, and why couldn't we send robots? Okay, you said that we, it does interfere with natural selection, but we are people, we are humans, which is blessed with the gifts of rationality. The biological, the, the, the biological design of us is that we want to protect the uh, human species as long as possible, and we don't want it to be extinct. That's why we reproduce. So it's very odd for you to say, okay, we're gonna get extinct, and justify that with, with just say, I'm gonna let the climate change happen without doing any such actions to battle it. Thank you. First of all, uh, thank you for your POI. However, uh, I never said anything about doing nothing to battle climate change. And also, what I was mainly stating was that in the far, far future, we were going to be extinct no matter what. It's, it's a fact. However, um, I would like to go back to the previous argument. Uh, and why couldn't we send robots instead of humans in the far future with the sole technology that would be developed by them? And with uh, your argument about climate change and how Earth wouldn't be able for wouldn't be able for us to live in anymore, instead of thinking of how we potentially live in Mars, why don't we think of potentially living underwater? There has been animals that has been known to evolve and to adapt it to new areas of living and why couldn't we find ways to make that happen? And that is it for my speech. Thank you. Now I would like to call the reply speaker of the negative team, which will be the second speaker, Ms. Ganda. I will start my reply in three, two, one. 
Thank you for all the arguments and rebuttals from the affirmative team. But I would like to state that my group has brought up the ideas of using terrain that we actually have, the conditions that we already know of, and the resources that would be more efficiently allocated to, well, the Earth, the planet that we already live in at the moment. While the other team has suggested that we send humans, instead of using those resources, we send humans, maybe let them die, on another planet that we currently have no idea if it's stable enough to even support our life, and that would greatly waste uh, the costs and the time that we could spend out on the resources, the terrain, the underwater uh, ideas that we already have on Earth, like other creatures on this planet. And uh, that is why, uh, again, my team firmly believes that the risks outweigh the benefits greatly that we should not send humans, as of now, to Mars to potentially die, to potentially, well, not find anything and focus on Earth. Thank you. Thank you. Now I would like to call the reply speaker of the marketing. I'll start my speech in three, two, one. So thank you for all the arguments from the negative team and also my team. I can identify a clash here. So we both believe that there are many problems on Earth, but it's just how to overcome it. The proposition team um, is proposing to use the money we have now to find alternatives of better life than living on Earth, which is going to Mars, research on Mars. But the negative team stated that we have to use the money to overcome the problems on planet Earth itself. And then to rebut that, we said that for many years, there are no proof that we have overcome the problems on Earth, like global warming. The temperature every day is still rising. And to rebut that again, the negative team stated that uh, the data shows that in COVID-19, the temperature is decreasing, but the question is, are we going to live in the pandemic forever? The, the reason that the temperature during COVID-19 is decreasing because, of course, it's, it's logical. People stay at home, we don't go out. Of course, the pollution, the global warming, the temperature will be decreasing. And so, I can conclude that our team has better arguments and more logical arguments than the university team. Thank you.